Hi, it's nice to see you again. So I'm the last session for the DPDK Summit. I still, I hope that you have power to, to listen. <laughs> but after that, you can go. No, you need to stay. Tomorrow is the OVS conference also. Uh, so you, you see me there too. Uh, OK, so yesterday we, ex we, we showed how you can use uh, the VXLAN in order to create uh, a switch that is functioning well for virtual interface. And then we want to extend it uh, to support switches. And what I want to present now, it's uh, using a new DPDK port representer uh, for switch dev application like OVS. So I will say why, what we brought, why we need it, uh, what it's include, and final and first the open source of, uh, that we can use do it, and a little bit about Melanox that's doing it. Okay, so what we are brought, what we brought, so we brought a switch representing to DPDK. So a few years ago, roughly three years ago, uh, we started to do it uh, in the kernel. Uh, in the kernel, it's called the switch dev API. Uh, so the SRAV implementation can be seen by the, the kernel. We create the orchestration there. And we drive, and we have a, a, a full solution that is already upstream. And now the customer saying, OK, we want a DPDK application that can run uh, and manage the switch. We don't want to use the kernel APIs for that. Uh, so we start working on that. So uh, DPDK 1811 uh, already supporting it. Uh, so the new API, it's uh, documented. Already it's uh, documented, and you can see it. So I'll try to say, to, to answer why we need it. So we need it because we want to accelerate the switches uh, by the hardware. And, of, and another way is thing that we want to do is to accelerate the packet processing for the VNFs. So today, uh, software virtual switches create perform, performance uh, burden. So we, as you know, when you run kind of OVS DPDK, you need to, to spend around four cores to forward the traffic. And when you consume four cores, you are limited on the bandwidth. And another thing that people don't like is the high latency also that's, that is creating. So when you use the harder SRIOV, for example, all the things are much easier. So that's, that's the reason why we need to do it, want to do it. Um, of course, when you consume virtual function to the virtual machine, the PMD that's running there can consume the hardware offload. It's not using a virtual interface that is a software one. It can actually consume hardware acceleration from the hardware if the hardware can support a RTE flow to drop packets, to do the classification, whatever. And this is actually what a VNF need to, to offload. So, it also can create, of course, a performance boost for VNFs. So what, what is a SmartNIC? I, I will not try to describe what is a SmartNIC, but if he's smart enough to do the things, he's a SmartNIC. It's easy explanation. So uh, usually most of the modern uh, silicons can do uh, kind of rules. So and we tried, you know, to, to specify it as, as a kind of a switch, um, an embedded switch. So actually, the hardware can create an, like a physical, like a, it's not a physical, it's a physical that is embedded inside the, the NIC that is doing the switching between um, endpoint. There could be virtual function, there could be something lighter, but it's, and that is virtual ports. Um, all the modern switches using today, like OpenV switch, using uh, flow-based flow switching. So it's not just switches, classic switches that's looking on the destination MAC or IPs. 
And of course, uh, we talk about uh, overlay. So we will need to support also VXTAN or Genev. Uh, um, as, as I mentioned, it it's could be operate with SRIOV or light, something that's lighter than SRIOV if we talk about containers and kind of stuff. Um, but I think what actually we want to give the customers that you can still use the legacy, the, the original uh, SDN, con, uh, SDN uh, that he's worked with, use the same rules, the same thing, the same API. For example, if, if he was using OVS, he will continue to, to use the same OVS, the same method, the same configuration, but under the hood, it will have hardware acceleration. So user's perspective, it won't, be, won't see any changes. And how, how actually we are doing it? So for example, uh, if you look on OVS, so OVS have a user space uh, daemon that is actually having all the uh, SDN rules, all the open flow rules. And when a packet is coming from the wire, the data path is usually empty. And the packet is going to the vSwitchD, and then it's forwarded the, traf the, the packet to the right location and modify it according to the rules, and add a rule to the data path. So the packet that is, the next packet that is belong to the same flow will be directly forwarded by the data path. That, that's the way, for example, OVS is working. So we want to do, extend the same concept and have like another hardware cache. So the rules that is inside the data path can go to the silicon and then the, the packets can be forwarded by the silicon or FPGA or uh, cores, whatever smart NIC is using. Um, in that way, we have a, a layered that can be built up. And what is nice in that is that you can accelerate what's the other support. So for example, today we are not supporting uh, rewriting for uh, ARP to do the ARP responder or something like that. So all the packets that can't be offloaded by the hardware is going upper layer, you're going to the DPDK of yes, and that will be do by the software. So then it's the hardware not need to support from the beginning at least all the, hard, all the capabilities. It just need to support some of them and most of the traffic then it accelerate, it can accelerate. And what is not accelerating can still be forwarded by the software. So what's it include? So actually what we added to DPDK, if you're looking on the DPDK, uh, we had two things. We had the port representers, which are standard uh, Ethernet dev. And we extend the RTE flow API uh, to add rules uh, for the e-switch. So what is actually a, a representer port? So representer ports, if, if, if you can try and think about a top of rack that is connected, mm, let's try to picture it. So you have kind of a top of rack that is have ports that's connect to virtual machines. Actually, if you look from the, so this is the virtual function from the virtual function, from the virtual machine perspective. But if you're looking from the switch perspective, there is the port of the switch. So there is an uplink port, and for each virtual function, you have a port. So the switch manager that is running inside the hypervisor is need to, need to see those ports. So those ports are ports that representing the, virtual, the port that is connected to the virtual par, uh, function. So that's the reason we call them uh, port representers. So what is actually doing with a port representer? So as I mentioned before, it's a standard port. It's a DPDK port. So you can send traffic. You can receive traffic on it. This is the fair things. So when you send a packet on the representer, it's actually 
uh, sending the packet, and the pa this packet will arrive to the virtual function, to the virtual machine, without looking on anything, any classification, so then you directly can send traffic. Another thing is, it's w on the receive side, when a virtual machine send a packet, a virtual functions uh, receive a packet, and the embedded switch don't have a rules what to do with that. So we created a kind of a slow path that the packet is arriving to the, uh, to the representer port, and the software need to decide what to do. But the software know that the packet is coming from this virtual function, from this virtual port. And another thing that we are doing, of course, it's the way to use for the RTE flow to specify according to packets that are coming from this port with this classification, do these actions and send it on a different port. So that's using the representer ports. So, of course, as an open source, we have an uh, obvious conference tomorrow. So we want to implement it on Open vSwitch. And again, that's what approximately we did in the kernel. So the, uh, the, obvious, data the obvious data path, that's DPDK data path, will add RTE flow, and, we'll pro and that will go to the, to the embedded switch. And we already started to code that, and we will publish a and we'll push the patches to the OVS uh, uh, mailing list. Um, and I think it's, it will be ready in, I don't know, a few months. Um, so just about some Mellanox uh, solution. So in Mellanox, we call it a sub-square, meaning uh, acceler mm, it's got it. So it's mean accelerate switch and packet processing. And actually, I think what we're trying to achieve that is not just a VirtIO interface. That's the difference. It can be used to accelerate VirtIO interface, but it can be more than that. So two things that we, we're trying to achieve that is a virtual function, for example. A virtual function can run rocket traffic. That is something that's in a remote RDMA that is coming uh, from InfiniBand and it's working also for, uh, over Ethernet. And if you want to run your own, VN, uh, your own VNF that is using the acceleration of a, PM, or, or a vendor PMD, and not just you know, a virtual PMD that don't have hardware acceleration. Uh, so that, that's the motivation to, to use SRIOV. Uh, just to give you an example of, uh, of performance, so the Mellanox card, the ConnectX5 card, um, we have some uh, demonstration uh, that's when you want to run, to run like OVS DPDK with VXLAN, uh, it's consume roughly four cores. If you take four cores, you can forward uh, around seven million, eight million packets per second. And if you're using the SRAV solution, you can forward like almost 70 million packets per second and without consuming any CPU. So you, you, it's not just you get uh, almost uh, 10 times the performance, you, you gain four more cores that you can sell uh, to, to the customers. I think it's even get worse or better, it depends from what eyes you are looking at, uh, when you have a lot of rules. So obvious DPDK, that's for example, when we're adding 60K rules, the, the performance drop to two million packer per second. Also our, our solution is also dropping some uh, the performance, but less, of course. So we are reaching around the 20 million packer per second. So you see that is roughly 10 times better from performance, and you get also four core CPU. So that's the motivation to use uh, harder uh, port representing, 
a switch uh, uh, representation. And right on the time. I do have two seconds for questions or more. Any question or you are tired and want to go home? <laughs> Any questions? Last speaker, last chance to ask a question. So I, if no question, I will stay also for the OVS conference. You can approach. Thank you. Thanks, Ronnie.